One more latest guideline of UGC is creating a lot of buzz these days. I'm sure even you have heard about this guideline related to professor of practice. So after these guidelines were released, many people reached out to me to ask me what exactly is a professor of practice? So who exactly is a professor of practice? Who can become and how can you become a professor of practice? That means what is the eligibility criteria for it? They also wanted to know where can they apply as a professor of practice? If there is any special qualification which is required, what kind of remuneration would they be getting and what would be the tenure or the timeline of this professor of practice? So in case you also have questions related to professor of practice and want answers to all these questions that I've just mentioned, then you don't have to do anything except continue watching this video with your one and only PhD mentor, trainer, advisor, Dr. Ritika Gabba. So let us start this video by telling you why this new regulation was released or this new guideline was released by UGC in the first place. So let's start. So why these guidelines related to professor of practice? These guidelines have been issued by UGC in order to incorporate the recommendations which were made by the National Education Policy of 2020, which had suggested that the industry and academia should collaborate on various fronts. So the main purpose and the main thing that this guideline is trying to do is to invite experts, to invite people from the industry who have a lot of experience in their field to come to universities, to come to various educational institutions as a faculty member and teach the students the practical aspects of the theory that they are studying. So the students are getting the theoretical knowledge from the books, from the existing faculty members. But how does this theory, how will this theory be used in the industry? This is, this thing should be taught by these professors of practice. Besides this, also there are many other activities which UGC wants these professors of practice and the university's faculty to do together. What are these things that they want them to do is something which we are going to take up in our next section of this video. Before moving on to the responsibilities of professors of practice, let us first understand the eligibility criteria of who can become a professor of practice. Any distinguished expert, preferably in the senior level, with at least 15 years of experience working in the same profession, same industry, not the same company, the same industry, the same professional area, then you can apply as a professor of practice in any university or college or other UGC or ASET recognized institute. You do not require any special qualification like a PhD or a NET or even have to publish papers. Your expertise, your experience in the industry is enough for you to apply as a professor of practice and you can be from any industry. You can be from the legal side, a civil servant, from public administration, media, literature, art, science, management, hospitality, hospital, any industry, as long as you have an enriching experience that you can share with the students. So let us now move on to our next section and discuss what are the major responsibilities of a professor of practice. So professor of practice, the most important thing, the major expectation, what the university or the educational institute would have from you is to teach the young minds. Besides this, you would also be expected to develop courses, curriculum, suitable and acceptable to the industry. So keeping in mind what the industry requires accordingly, the, uh, the educational institution would require you to develop courses. Besides this, you will also have to mentor students on various entrepreneurship projects and various research projects. 
as i had mentioned earlier the university would want you to collaborate to come together and work with the faculty members of the university or the educational institution as well and together the faculties and the professor of practice ugc suggests should do various training programs workshop conferences you should also take up various consultancy projects in the industry and do research projects together or write research papers together so all in all what ugc wants is to bring in more industry exposure through you for the educational institution where you have been appointed as a professor of practice from discussing the responsibilities let us now move on to the tenure of professor of practice yes i am using the word tenure because professor of practice is not a permanent job it is actually a work which you will take up on contractual basis initially the contract would be drawn for a period of 1 year after which the university will assess your performance and will also assess if they require uh, a professor in that area anymore if they do they can draw a contract again for another year the maximum time period for which you can continue as a professor of practice in the same university is 3 years and in certain special exceptional cases 4 years but not beyond that now let us discuss the various categories or the various ways under through which you can come and teach as a professor of practice we would also be discussing in this section the remuneration that you would be getting in different categories so the first category is professor of practice funded by the industry as the name suggests in this category you would be uh, sent by your own company to work as a professor of practice in one of the higher education institution in this case you would not be getting any remuneration from the higher educational institution instead you would be drawing your normal regular salary from your own company and after your stint as a professor of practice you would go back to your company like normal old times from here we move on to the second category which is professor of practice funded by the higher educational institution from their own resources so here you would work as a professor of practice in the educational institution you would be drawing a fixed remuneration which would be decided by you and the university or the educational institution together probably before you join as a professor of practice this would be a consolidated amount since you are not a permanent employee of this higher education institution and you would be drawing this consolidated amount as decided by both of you so it could be on a monthly basis it could be per semester or whatever from here we move on to the last category which is professor of practice on an honorary basis so here you may be a uh, one of them who loves to share their knowledge with the young minds who want to share their expertise and therefore you would you would work in the higher educational institution as a professor of practice on an honorary basis here a certain amount of honorarium would be given to you by the edu uh, higher educational institution but this honorarium would be decided by the educational institution themselves and it would not be a consolidated amount or an amount which is discussed with you it would just be on an honorarium or an on on a basis so these are the various categories and the remuneration which a professor of practice would get with this we come to the last part of this video how and where can you apply as a professor of practice so currently these regulations have been released by the name of professor of practice in universities and colleges but eventually i'm sure very soon uh, even autonomous co colleges uh, autonomous institutes and institute of national importance would be inviting applications from professors of practice so any ugc aict or government recognized institution you can apply as a professor of practice how can you apply so there are two ways either an expert in your own industry can nominate you 
or you can even self nominate yourself okay now what should you do when you are nominating yourself in that case you should send in a detailed resume to a vice chancellor or to the director of the institute and you should definitely along with your resume include a letter a brief telling them that how if you are chosen as a professor of practice of that institute how are you going to contribute to their growth this is an important part of this application i hope that you have understood these regulations well i have been able to answer all your questions in case you still have any questions related to professor of practice then feel free to post them in the comment section below i would love to answer all of them this is dr ritika gaba i am here to empower you with in depth well researched knowledge don't forget to subscribe to our channel like share and comment on our videos Thank you so much for watching my video.